So our next topic is, you know, after you gather all that data, what do you do with it? It's about putting it into action. So strategy is a huge area in FRC, from design strategy to match strategy to strategically picking which event you go do, um, a limb strategy, and so much more. So Katie threw around the phrase secret sauce, um, which I love sauces. So I'm excited to hear about um, each of your team's secret sauce, how it came to be, and at some point, if you had to bottle and name your team's secret sauce, what would you name it? So, um, Katie, what do you think the secret sauce is for your team now that you've you know, joined this new team and you've really gone through a great season of learning how to collect data and implement it? Um, so my answer is not going to be very like exciting, um, but first off, like as far as match strategy, make sure that your robot works every match. Um, Driving every match is like incredibly important, and yet like every team struggles with it at some point, um, like whether they were rookies or whatever. Uh, also, talking to alliances before the match and getting everyone on page with your strategy, um, it like blows my mind that there's teams who won't meet their alliance partners until they're in line or like until they're next to each other in the driver's station. Um, and I think getting everyone on board, um, I would say that like. I have not found the secret sauce yet, which is why I asked this question. So like, I want to know what the secret sauce is. And with Boba Bots, our, our brand would probably be something like Boba Tea, which is just, our theme really lends itself. So that's, that's all I got. Good. You would have things floating in the bottom of your secret sauce bottle. I like that. Yeah. Um, Brennan, what about you? What is your team's secret sauce besides keeping it real on paper? Yeah, um, I think one of the big things that we do that uh, sets us apart from other teams is really understanding how the game works and what kind of uh, statistics or information we want from that uh, from from the field um, and 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 converting that into tangible, you know, action plans, useful information, talking to the teams. One of the things that we and I'm sure a lot of other teams do as well is have a, a dedicated strategy person who's constantly working on uh, you know, the next match plan, reviewing the match uh, via video. We have uh, video reviews after every single match so that we make sure that we're, we're on the ball there. Um, you know, for, for picking, uh, you know, the, the practice field scouting that I've mentioned has saved our butts and come, in, come in clutch several times now. Uh, you know, with with great third picks that uh, you know we can either fix up or get working. So, and if you had to bottle in name slash brand your team secret sauce, it would definitely be the best drink ever, milk. <sighs> nice, keeps you strong and healthy. And Carl, yes. what about what about you guys? So you obviously get tons and tons of data. Um, I'm sure it organizes itself, um, but what well, like what is your team's secret sauce i guess like what's the most important thing in terms of like strategy and i really want to know what you would name your sauce as a team <laughs> um i'm not sure if we have a secret sauce to be honest um i think one of the most important things is designing our system to be real time um so as soon as data comes in it gets processed and a couple minutes later it's available to view um instantly on a, a viewer app um in terms of like how data plays into our strategy we have an overall general strategy for our qualification matches um, that we're constantly updating as we learn more about the game through watching match videos, um, through analyzing strategy and whatnot. And then the data tells us what roles each of the robots in our match should play in our strategy. Um, and so we, it also tells us um, uh, our goal at every competition is to seed first, um, so we're in a picking position. And so our data also, we predict um, how teams are going to seed um, and we can figure out how many ranking points we need uh, in order to guarantee a first seed, and sometimes that affects our later match strategy. Um, and then in terms of software, the, the main focus for our software for displaying data for match strategy is to get the information across as quickly as possible. Um, so for a single match, you have a single screen of data, and all that data fits on one screen. Um, so we try to emphasize getting that data across as efficiently as possible. And what would you name your team's secret sauce? Uh, I'm not sure. Probably something to do with citrus or whatnot. I'd like to think it'd be avocados because it seems like that is the uh, <laughs> brain food that makes you guys so good. Um, so I think that something I want to hear about from you guys is in terms of like pre-match strategy, like Katie was saying, like 
I mean, it, I would agree. It blows my mind that some teams just show up and they're like, hey, guys, we got about 45 seconds. Like, what are we going to do here? So in terms of um, kind of pre-match strategy, like how far in advance do you start to plan um, what you and your alliance partners are going to be doing in that match? And I would assume, like, since all of you have your stuff together enough to be on the show and talk really, you know, articulately about scouting that you're probably the people that, you know, or you're the team that goes to your Alliance partner. So what advice do you have for maybe like newer teams or teams that aren't quite doing that yet? Katie, we'll start with you. All right. Uh, my advice is come in with some information. Um, if you, whatever scouting data you have, bring it in uh, because you're going to make a better strategy if everyone's honest about their abilities. Um, and then also make sure that you're honest about your abilities. I know we all see our teams as like the best team ever because obviously our team is right. Uh, but you can't enter a match strategy conversation with, Hey, we do all the things because best case, they don't know that you're wrong and they trust you to do the thing. And worst case, they bring data that says, no, you don't. And then you look like a fool. Um, so I think it's like really important to bring information and then also come in with what you think the strategy should be, but be willing to be flexible. Um, I know it sucks sometimes to be told to be defense, but also what is your goal at this event? Is your goal to rank high? Because sometimes playing defense is what it's going to take. Um, so being flexible is really important. Having your information and being honest, um, those are going to get you really far as far as like getting started in the strategy idea. Mm -hmm. And Brennan, what about you, especially in, in districts where you're seeing some of the same teams over and over again, you may like be partnered with a team that you've played with and you know that like pre-match strategy can be kind of rough. Like what, what approach would you take? Cause you're obviously the drive coach too. So you probably do this a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, it, with, with playing with the same teams, uh, that, that aspect, uh, usually we have good experiences, so that's, that's nice. Oftentimes, uh, you know, working with uh, past alliance partners uh, at new events is really exciting because you have, you know, kind of developed your your strategy a little bit more and and can kind of evolve it as a group because you've played in a limbs, you know, six matches perhaps if you go all the way, right? So uh, I don't know that that's 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 good. When going back to the the you know what what can new teams do? I, same thing as Katie, you know, work, uh, work on just coming with some sort of data, be open-minded. Uh, a lot of teams, uh, you know, they become hard to work with when they are, you know, either, you know, stubborn to work on something, you know, they don't want to play defense is a common thing, but, you know, working with them in a positive way, making sure that you're hearing all, every, everybody who's on the Alliance, um, is, is important. And uh, just making sure you know what what your robot's capable of, and being honest if it's if it's not working as well as you'd like it to be. And Carl, what do you guys do in terms of um, pre match kind of scat or strategy? I know um, we're lucky enough to have Kelly on our team, and she brought this really cool approach to um, pre match kind of strategy with our alliance partners to the point where she'd be bringing students to their pits like you know, really far in advance, kind of observing first and then having the kids go and talk to them. So how do you guys approach that? Yeah, we usually try to do it as far in advance as possible while still having data. Um, so usually that's one or two of our matches in advance. Uh, and then we also, the reason we do that is because they could be busy fixing the robot. Um, and we also make sure we're working around their match schedule and aware of when their matches are um, and what their turnaround between matches is. So we have time to talk to them um, and then also time to review the strategy before the match. And how do you guys, um, and this is for everybody, not just Carl, but I'm curious to see how each of your teams kind of approaches integrating your drive team into the pre like match strategy. Like, do you go to your drive team like separately and then go to your, you know, Alliance partners and then come back and have them all talk? Like how, how does your team approach kind of taking scout data to your drive team, um, before a match? So, so on 1296, um, so on 1296, one thing we had was we had this role of strategist. Uh, she was part of the drive team, but she wasn't like on the drive team. Uh, and what she would do is she would work with the head scout. They would talk back and forth about what the data is and like you know verify it. 
And then she would come up with the strategy. I mean, she loved this role and like she was fantastic at it. So she would come up with the strategy and then she would be the one taking a member or two of the drive team to talk to other drive team. Um, so like, because it was her designated role, she was the one to lead those meetings and uh, the whole drive team wouldn't go because like the driver had other things he wanted to do, but like the co-driver is like really excited about it. And it made sense that he would go cause he'd end up being the one coaching the driver. Um, <laughs> sometimes his drive coach doesn't even coach your own team. And 253 actually works in a very similar way, but instead of the strategist being a unique role, it was also our human player. Cool. And um, Brennan, what about you guys? How do you approach that? Yeah. So uh, like Katie, we have a dedicated um, strategy uh, mentor and student that kind of pair up and, and talk to uh, other teams. They are kind of our ambassadors. Uh, what we do is they kind of work with the strategy or the, the scouting team, come up with a preliminary plan, take that plan to our potential alliance partners uh, ahead of the match and discuss uh, what what kind of options there are, be open-minded, kind of come to a conclusion. Uh, then they take that information, bring it to our drive team. Uh, and then when the drive team uh, goes up, what we do is we review the match or plan right before the match make sure that everybody's on the same page there's so many times where we've uh thought that 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 a plan was solid uh and then we get into a match and then all of a sudden you know team a is doing something that they weren't supposed to be doing and then having to work that out during the match is not fun so mm -hmm. doing a, a quick recap before the the start of the match is uh really useful for us too uh the other thing we have is what we call our topping crew so waffle toppings we what we do is uh we have yes. <laughs> we have a whole bunch of students and mentors that uh, you know are more technical and not so uh, you know strategy or scouting wise. What they do is they take the information from the scouts um, on teams that may be struggling or that we have uh, uh, matches with in in the future. Uh, you know, go and help out their their robot, be a technical, uh, making sure that they're inspected, giving them a, them a, a, an autonomous mode that drives forwards, for example. Uh, all those things are are kind of the role and the responsibility of those those individuals. Yeah, that sounds a lot like Citra Service. So, Carl, is there anything else that you want to add that your team does before uh, matches start? No, we do it pretty similar. Eh? Um, we also have a student role. Um, and then the difference for us is that we don't talk directly to the scouting team. Um, we use a viewer application to just send data directly um, mm -hmm. so they can view it and access it when they need to. So fancy. So PJ the Rough wants to know for everybody, um, opinions on scouting alliances for match strategy. Yeah, so uh, I haven't necessarily been in a uh, scouting alliance. Um, I know for our team uh, and, and where I'm at now, I guess I am unlikely to join a scouting alliance of people that I don't trust their data because like I one of my big st sticking points is making sure that our data is is bang on and doesn't have errors and making sure that you know we're checking that uh, and one of the, th the problems that I think a lot of FRC teams face is that there's a lot of human error when you're trying to collect data um, even even with training and that kind of stuff uh, we, we catch like you know 10% of our data is is slightly off or something like that. Uh, you know, it's a it's a large per percentage of your data, and if you have that built up um, when you're making strategy calls and and um, and pick lists, uh, generally I prefer to even with a, a limited limited team and 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 scaling back with what we're what we're uh, recording. Uh, generally prefer that, but uh, yeah, like I said, I've never never been in a scouting alliance. Yeah, so I I'm curious too. So when I read this question, I wasn't sure if he meant alliances of people scouting together or scouting an alliance like on the field. So oh, yeah, I'm gonna ask Katie for the other viewpoint of this question. Um, what is your take on scouting? How teams like are working together as an alliance during quals. <laughs> you... Or Carl, you can hop in on this too. <laughs> okay. Um, we don't scout, we scout the, the individual teams directly. 
Um, mm-hmm. We don't find anything useful for alliances. Um, for the teams we work with in matches, we do remember how well they've worked with us. Um, but that's about it. Awesome. So, so oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I had to do them in high school because my team was so small. Um, and what we would do is we just like would find teams that, you know, wanted to do a scouting allowance, alliance, usually via Chief Delphi. And um, you just meet up with those teams at the beginning. You decide whose database you're going to use. Uh, I found it really, really good. The only issue I had is that if your team's not the one with the database, it can be really difficult to get the information on the fly. Oh, um, mm, tricky. So, like, we technically were in one with Wave in 2011. And I think I remember, like, going to their pit and asking them to print something out for me or something. Um, it's just that's the difficult part is, like, if you don't have the database, sometimes you're, you're out, of, out of the loop on actually getting your data. But otherwise, it's nice because if you only have two scouts or you only <laughs> have four people in the stands, like, you just commit to giving two people per shift or whatever. And, like, your scouts aren't miserable. Your team still has data. Uh, win, win, win. Hey, and the blue alliance is really good now too. Like I, I will say, like the type of data you can find on the blue alliance is getting significantly better and better, and it's the proof of like the open source kind of community that FRC is becoming. So somebody in chat whose name I can't read right now because it's in red on black highlight, Pran Shavilla. Okay. Wow, okay, huge fun. Uh, wants to know, and I'm excited to hear about this, uh, some teams scout refs in addition to teams. Any thoughts on this practice? Um, we haven't found anything useful from scouting refs. Um, we're generally, yeah, we don't try to like push boundaries of rules. Um, so we haven't, we have, um, we do take notes sometimes when refs are like antsy or calling fouls more often, um, but we don't scout for that or use that data. Mm. exactly the same as carl uh we don't officially scout it but if one of our scouts notice something we'll uh, make a note thanks for watching if you want more fun content be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos you can also directly help support fun by visiting our patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.